As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. In this episode, we're going to change things up a little bit. Rather than having an outside expert to call on, I will be answering your questions about my path to becoming a reluctant prepper. Our third question for making of a reluctant prepper comes from Jason S., who asks, Could you explain the specific preparedness steps you have personally taken so far and what your priorities are to do next? Yeah, I'd be happy to share the steps that we've taken so far, although everyone's path is different and they've got to evaluate where they're starting from and what their priorities are. For us, one of the greatest priorities we've talked about with many of the guests we've had on here is getting a supply of food because you know obviously there's the, the rule of three that you can only live like three minutes without air and three three days without water and three weeks without food so uh, that's been a high priority for our family we typically have had a pantry where we just kept sort of staples that we use for ingredients and cooking and that sort of thing but we never really took seriously the idea of having some excess or extra uh, food stores on hand in case of a disruption in our food supply and um, I'm going to include in this episode some photos of some stores in our neighborhood that where the shelves were stripped bare. Well, we had a serious uh, snowfall this last winter in the Midwest with this polar vortex and all that, and people were stocking up beforehand. We, we saw an armed police officer guarding the exits of our local grocery store and the shelves stripped bare. And when disruptions like that happen, and they will, whether it's from natural causes or from man-made causes, uh, how people prepare uh, ahead of time. It's too late at that point to prepare. So it's when in the good times uh, setting aside extra so you, you can weather out, weather out those uh, tough times. And a lot of our guests have said uh, that there's a couple ways you can go. Um, some people do like meals ready to eat which is you know, military type rations and everybody uniformly says they taste terrible even though they have a really long shelf life. But um, the idea of having something around that's just going to be gosh awful to eat just didn't really didn't appeal to us. So the other two options are to buy like freeze dried or dehydrated uh, emergency food, which we have some of, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But primarily, that the, your number one option that, that our guests have recommended, and is to just buy extra of what you normally would eat anyway if it's non-perishable, and then just use a rotation method. So we, when refinishing our basement, built an extra pantry room that has some nice shelving we put in there so that we have enough room to, to handle. It could handle months of uh, food supply for us. Currently I would say we're up to maybe one month, three weeks to one month of supply and we're, we're increasing from there. But basically it's just that when you go to, and we happen to belong to one of these uh, large scale wholesale clubs so that we can get larger quantities and really checking the freshness dates. I was shocked when checking the freshness dates on things that I assumed without thinking about it from the past as we all tend to not have thought about maybe a lot of these things but taken a lot for granted I thought that the shelf life on things would typically be like a year or two and I was surprised to find some of the shelf lives were significantly shorter than that so try to pay attention to the shelf lives but always putting the new purchased items behind or have a left to right system or some way that it's that you routinely have of making sure that you're using up the oldest first and rotating your supplies. Um, so we've got number one, that's one of the changes that we made was was starting to purchase more of the things we buy. Uh, we typically have some like a you know canned tuna or salmon or canned chicken, so some canned meats. We have uh, various types of uh, beans, uh, whether it's, you know, we are kind of heavy into organics, other people aren't, but we purchase extra of, of uh, different types of beans because they're high in, in protein and fiber and B vitamins, that sort of thing. And other, you know, pastas and things that are, that are have a longer shelf life and, and rotate those. So we've got about currently building up, up through about a month's worth of uh, groceries uh, stocked in the pantry. Uh, we also did purchase from the Ready Store, which is one of the several suppliers you can find online, some uh, dehydrated and freeze-dried emergency food. Some of these things have 25-year shelf lives. We've got you know a collection of dried fruits. We've got a collection of dried meats. We've got a collection of various carbohydrates and starches and rice and different things that are in these uh, 
plastic buckets and, and cans that are that have long, very long shelf life. So this is stuff we would not normally eat, but it's it's something that is an extra uh, safety blanket there, just in case we go through our semi-perishable things that only have a one to two year shelf life. We know we've got this other stuff that's got really long shelf life um, and still should have a fairly decent flavor, especially the freeze-dried stuff, uh, not too bad. Um, we were really dismayed to find out that gardening is not allowed by our homeowners association because gardening is is just a great i mentioned in my in the earlier episode that i was brought up gardening so the idea of being able to provide for you know half of the year really very fresh and uh, very nutritious stuff for your family from your own resources is very compelling and if you at all can do it that's a great recommendation we aren't allowed to in our area um, but there's some ways to work around that with using pots or bins or window boxes, that sort of thing, to do some limited scale stuff. And um, whatever uh, you can do, I would recommend people do do uh, gardening, but that's something that's not at a scale currently for us. And that would be a future, uh, each of these topics, I, I'd like to, to touch on what we're doing now and then what we're planning on doing next. And that's a serious next consideration for us is getting to where we have some land where we could do a, a larger scale of gardening. However, even though we don't have the ability currently to garden, we are utilizing some local producers of uh, food and networking with friends who raise food. We, we've interviewed the guy next door on here on this channel and you know that uh, he's raising chickens and so on. So we're, gonna, we're continuing to build relationships with local producers and that's something that's important. We've, we've used the farmer's market here. Uh, if you have a farmer's market in your community or if you can get one in a nearby community, it's a great way to meet local producers and find out more. Ask lots of questions about where they're located. Can you come for a visit? We, in our previous home, had belonged to a community-supported agriculture, CSA, which is a basically if the family-owned farm where they have the ability to produce much more than their family needs, and so you buy shares of their crop for the season, and whatever number of shares is appropriate for your family, your, your needs, and every week we would receive a delivery of multiple, you know, large grocery boxes full of fresh produce, and my wife was just a, a magician at knowing how to how to process that stuff down through our to a food processor and turn it into soups and stews and add it to all kinds of different uh, dishes. Um, so that's very fresh, uh, very local. You get, we get to visit the farm, see how they did their methods, explain how they're building the soil and improving the conditions there all through natural methods. Um, great way to support both the family-centered uh, production of food and your local community. I know that you're getting stuff fresh much more resilient. It didn't depend on any long distance infrastructure, or railroads or trucking or you know foreign oil or any of that kind of stuff to make it happen. So the next priority for us was water. We realized we typically had on hand just a, a few cases of bottled water, you know, just for going to the health club or whatever, and that was not going to get us very far. And in a case of a real disruption or any kind of a line breakage for whatever reason, if there was a deep freeze or a any kind that would cause a, a, a drop in our pressure uh, or supply of, of safe city water uh, and we don't have well water here uh, again the guy next door was able to get put a well on his property so that gives him uh, almost unlimited supply of his own private water source we don't have that here living in a suburban environment so what we did initially was find a great sale price on bottled water this is these you know 32 packs of uh, half liter bottles and just stocked up uh, we bought large, large numbers. So we have probably a, a month or more supply of bottled water there to satisfy all of our drinking and grooming type needs. Uh, but then also based on on uh, referrals from a number of our visitors, guests here on the show, for, uh, repeatedly endorsing the Berkey brand water filter, that's B-E-R-K-E-Y, Berkey. So we went to the, again to the Ready store and bought a stainless steel three gallon Berkey water filter with extra filter elements and then they have additional add-on filter elements for taking out fluoride and um, other heavy metals. And so we've uh, got that on, on at the ready and it's we live you know not too far from some natural uh, sources of, ground, of open uh, fresh water here so in a pinch uh, we could supplement our, our you know purified bottled water supply by bringing in uh, outside water whether we would capture rainwater or whether we bring up water from one of the uh, you know, natural sources nearby and filter through our Berkey unit uh, to provide drinking water or uh, cooking water that sort of thing for our family and uh, that's another area where we really need to take some additional steps in terms of larger scale water storage uh, for things like bathing and, and so on. 
Air is another thing. Again, by the rule of three, you can only live for three minutes without clean air. We have outfitted our home with a large uh, HEPA high efficiency particulate arrestor HEPA air cleaner on each each level of our home. Um, the brand we chose was Austin Air. They are uh, they have the largest capacity, uh, like 30 pound of carbon filter with a five year warranty on the on the filter life. Which is if you look at a lot of air filters, they have this little cartridge, you know, smaller than a little box of Kleenex or something. Um, that's the actual carbon cartridge in there. But this carbon cartridge is this huge cylinder, you know, big around as a as like a tire. Uh, and it uh, has the ability to remove a lot of uh, both chemical gases and particulates from the air. So that's on each level of our home. We also put in a radon abatement system in our home. If you don't have, if you have a basement, uh, you really should have it checked for radon. It's not that expensive to have it tested. It's usually a several days test. Uh, any number of local providers can do that test for you. And uh, radon is naturally occurring radioactive gas that seeps up from the ground more or less in different areas of the country depending on the, the ground formation and uh, its exposure to radon gas can give similar uh, risks to your lung health as smoking so especially if you have basement uh, bedrooms or if you have basement recreation room as we do and spend any time in your basement um, it can really impact the healthfulness of, of your home environment since so, you know that's what we're talking about a lot in this show is protecting our families and so the the safety and healthfulness of your domestic castle it starts with being able to have clean air to breathe inside your home so really recommend people get their radon checked and a radon abatement system can be anywhere from say six hundred to twelve hundred dollars to have installed basically it's a, a fan that pulls air from underneath your floor slab in your basement and blows it out the side of the house or up the roof and uh, it basically creates a low pre lower pressure so that any of that radon gas that would naturally be present in the ground around your foundation does not want to seep into your living space because your living space that uh, is at a higher pressure because this this fan is pulling from below your foundation and it's making basically a vacuum cleaner underneath your house that's pulling that radon gas from the ground so it never enters your house in the first place it's a really great idea um, and uh, everybody should have that. In fact, some areas you can't even sell your house without that being in place. So you might as well do it just for your own for your own peace of mind. And the next thing that we are considering is uh, purchasing gas masks for family members. Now that's one thing. As soon as I say it, or even think about saying it, I right away think, "Oh my gosh, this is one of those bunker mentality." Uh, wacko things that that only an extreme person and how can I call myself a reluctant prepper if I'm talking using the word gas mask in the same sentence but we live within a mile of uh, two different railroad lines and if you've seen any of the news stories about derailments of cars containing you know anhydrous ammonia or methane or propane or any of these other chemicals that, that get tanked around in tanker cars um, it's it's quite uh, possible that there could be, and we also live not too far from a uh, petroleum refinery and uh, not too far from a sewage treatment plant, so there's credible reason to think that there could be an uh, event that would make the air in our neighborhood um, dangerous, and and if, if one of your uh, options is evacuation, okay, if you can do that and if you find out in time, etc., but if you're trying to shelter in place, um, for any reason, if you need clean air to breathe for your family, it would be better to have that option than not. So in the past, we'd purchased uh, respirators and chemical can filters, that sort of thing, when we were doing um, a number, amount of painting, because we have some chemical sensitivities in our family. So being able to have the ability to protect your family's breathing, you know, if you think about it, your lungs are really, really delicate. Uh, there's very tiny little air sacs in there, the, the alveoli, and there's these little tiny capillaries, and there's all those little passageways in there, and you get one set of lungs. You don't have spares. So do what you need to do to protect uh, your family's uh, health in, in that way. And so that's something we'd be looking at going forward, uh, potentially is purchasing gas masks with chemical filters for the family. And again, I understand if you guys are having the same reaction that I am, that that sounds extremist, but uh, frankly, it's, it's, a, it's a prudent thing to have on your list because you really can't uh, uh, live for minutes uh, without clean air. So the next thing that we've talked about some in the past is gold and silver.